Welcome to the Wall Street crossover show brought to you by Tip TV in conjunction with our sponsors for this segment, Admiral Markets. It gives me great pleasure once again to introduce Mr. Darren Sindon, market commentator for Admiral. Um, good afternoon, young Darren. Good afternoon, Nick. Um, right, if you're watching for the first time, a number of slides. If you think there's something we're missing on the European rap stroke going into Wall Street, give us a shout. We're always open to... Um, yeah, comments, feedback, suggestions, we'd like to hear them all. We'd, or we will take it positively. OK, let's kick off um, today with data released over the European session. What's caught your eye today, Darren? A busy old day, uh, data-wise, because it's uh, that time of the month where we start to get PMI data coming through. Um, so the first three things on the slide are just that, European PMI numbers. So first of all, we have the French services PMI for May came in at a read of 51.6, just to remind people you know, we're looking for reads above 50, 50. 50 to show growth and negative mm -hmm. uh, or declining growth would, would be a read below 50. Anyway, 51.6 for uh, May. Uh, that was below the forecast of 51.9, but it was ahead of the April read of 51.4. So there is some growth, but it's it's uh, slower than people had anticipated. Um, we move on to to the German manufacturing PMI. Uh, that came in for May at 51.4, and that was sharply below uh, the forecast of 52.3, and well below uh, the prior read of 52.1. So German manufacturing, which you think of as being one of the main drivers uh, for, for the Eurozone and Eurozone growth, actually uh, slowing. And then, I mean, there's a blizzard of these numbers, but uh, if, we, if we just move on to the Eurozone composite PMI for May, so that's uh, manufacturing and services combined. Um, and that came in at 53.4, um, below the forecast of, uh, of 53.8, and also below uh, the April read. Yeah, 53.9, <coughs> but it, again, but it was growth still. Um, what's interesting is that was a three-month low, but if you dig down into the data, the service figure, or services figure, I should say, came in at a four-month low, yet the manufacturing number overall for the Eurozone was a 13-month high. And so, you know, if you look at that manufacturing number in isolation, it looks very positive. Of course, you can't <laughs> actually look at it in isolation. You've got to look at all the data together. And what it just, well, I think what it shows us is it's a very uneven uh, landscape in the Eurozone economy. The, it, any recovery that is taking place is not taking place evenly. Uh, it's it's bumpy, and I think you know the ECB will hope that the QE will you know be a sort of self leveler, if you will, and try try and get, get everybody running at the same speed as, as it were. But we'll Understood. have to wait and see about that. Then then over here in the UK, we had retail sales for April. A uh, good they, beat. They were yeah up one point two percent against a forecast of zero point four uh, on a month on month basis and year over year. 4.7% uh, growth versus 3.8. The only thing is, this could be a seasonal blip. Yeah. Uh, they're saying that it was, you know, warmer uh, weather. Yeah, warmer weather drove people into the shops, and it's not necessarily so a bit of seasonality. What we want to see is, uh, you know, consistency. So we wanted to see another month or two of data um, to perhaps, in, you know, get us into the point where we could believe the UK consumer is uh, is spending freely and happy to do so once again. Understood. Okay, let's take a look at the FTSE 100 movers this morning. Uh, quite a dull day as far as the FTSE is concerned, I'm afraid. So uh, Smith's Group is a gainer today at 1.2%, reiterating guidance in their trading statement this morning. They've had quite a tough time of it, three you know, fairly tough quarters, but they think they're going to um, be able to make up um, and maintain their, their forecasts with, with, with activity in Q4. And the market sort of taken that at face value and, and on a dull day right. up 1.2 percent and then the big faller on the day in fact all the big fallers today really um, are ex-dividend stocks and Taylor Wimpy the house builder is amongst those down 4.43 percent as it goes ex-dividend i.e. It trades without the dividend from today and that happens on a Thursday every as Thursday well. these days was every Wednesday when we were growing up but that feels ago. like a very long time ago okay let's move on to um, M&A rumors and movers okay well uh, this is another interesting story that's, uh, that broke overnight. Um, a company called CVS Health is said to want to buy um, Omnicare. Uh, Omnicare yeah. Now, just just to sort of put this into perspective, these are companies that uh, are, what are what are called uh, uh, sorry, what are they called? Pharmacy healthcare providers. It's not not we don't have them here in the UK, but basically they're a, they're a mixture of, of a chemist and uh, treatment and, and care 
uh, services. Right. So, but scale is everything in uh, in the U.S. This deal, if it goes ahead, uh, would be worth around twelve billion dollars. Uh, Omnicare stocks spiked very sharply when the when the rumor broke yesterday, up, up around six point seven percent at one hundred one dollars. They've cooled off a little bit, but still are better on the day. Um, a while ago, Omnicare was, had also apparently attracted the interest from the largest player in the space, Express Scripts. That was that was. Uh, that, Bloomberg put that story around right. in April. Omnicare's market cap, just to give us uh, an idea about this, is nine billion pounds. Uh, CVS Health around 115 billion, sorry, dollars, I should say, nine billion dollars. CVS 115 billion dollars. So it's a modest acquisition for CVS if it goes ahead. But this is a sector that's already seen two two deals um, in 2015. 15 billion dollars being being pitched to buy up smaller businesses. Um, and uh, CVS Health at the moment is number two in the pharmacy healthcare provider space. Um, it, that's number two to Express Scripts. So, so we right. could perhaps see Express Scripts um, have a look at CVS if, um, and it is an if, if CVS make a, make a, make a move from Omnicare. So it's all, it's all to play for, but scale is everything. The American medical and healthcare scene is a market in flux. And people, are again, much like the cable TV space we talked about today, people are trying to put themselves in the best position with the right mix and blends of businesses and the right economies of scale. So um, even if this deal doesn't actually come to fruition, there, there will be more M&A in this space you know, in the year ahead. Understood. OK, let's take a look at US data points to keep an eye on today. OK, so it comes around very quickly, but we're back to weekly jobless claims. First of all, uh, we're looking for 270,000 as a forecast for today's number versus a read of 264,000 last week. So a slightly higher rate of uh, jobless claims this week. Um, and then uh, continuing our, our PMI theme, we've got the flash manufacturing PMI for the US looking for a, a, a very positive number here. We're looking for 54.6 uh, versus the read of 54.2 in April. It's, you know, we certainly don't want to undershoot the April number because that will uh, that will you know cast doubt about the strength of the US recovery once again. And then um, we've got um, the Philly Fed Business Outlook Survey later on this afternoon. Uh, again, it's a, an indicator of business activity and economic growth. Right. For a read of eight versus a read of seven and a half oh. in April. This is one of those data rich uh, slow burn numbers that uh, that may not move the market much today, but it but the, when people drill down into the survey, it's got lots of data that will probably have an effect over the medium term. Understood. OK, let's now take a look at the US pre-market movers and specific chart levels. OK, uh, right. Well, we're, we're going to look at Salesforce, first of all, uh, as a pre-market mover. We talked about them as a possible bid candidate uh, in recent weeks. They had their numbers yesterday. Stocks up around 4.32 percent this morning. Better uh, figures, better subscription revenues, because it's sharply higher their subscription revenue, sort of double digit growth there. Um, still not making profits per se um, at the moment, but uh, but the management is upbeat and the numbers do look a lot better. And 4.3%, as I say, bet they're, they're better on the day, possibly going to trade higher than that in the, the uh, main session. Um, and moving across to NetApp, NTAP is the ticker there. They're down 10%. Um, earnings miss. They were reporting Q4 numbers rather than Q1. Right. But they missed, missed on earnings last night. Very weak guidance uh, from the digital storage group. And the market's cooled them down 10%. Management did hold its hands up, said that they, they appreciated they hadn't done well enough and they're, they're putting things in place to, uh, to try and stop that for next quarter. Nonetheless, uh, a 10% fall was quite substantial. It's, it's an $11, $12 billion company. And in terms of uh, levels to watch today, um, very quiet on equity markets. So for uh, for the downside in FTSE, we look at 69.45, and to the upside, 7,050. Uh, the DAX slightly narrow range, but uh, but still still a couple of hundred points. Still <laughs> 11,602 your downside level, and 11,848 uh, the upside. Um, in, in terms of the U.S. markets, uh, we've just they were pretty much unchanged last night, but we have just raised our upper level in the S&P to 2135, uh, 2100. That round number remains in place on the downside. Uh, in the Dow, 18,208 would be a level I would watch uh, to the downside. Well, and 18,352, we need to get above that to make uh, further uh, good Headway. new highs. Yeah. Uh, and then in terms of the currencies, uh, Euro dollar 110.62 is our downside level, 111.80. On the upside, uh, currency actually weathered the, the negative PMI data this morning pretty well, I thought. Um, Aussie dollar back below 80, so 78.60 is our downside level to watch. 79.14, we'd need to get above that really to, to get back to 80 and move on to the upside. Uh, dollar yen, 
Uh, 120.48 at downside level, 121.40 the upside. It hasn't really broken out of the range, just maybe moved a bit closer to the top end of it. Yep. And in cable, um, better on the uh, on the retail sales data. So uh, 155.86 at downside level and 157.05 is the number to beat if we're going to make a further move to the upside. The levels all seem much calmer this week. Yeah, they are. That the, there is a lot less volatility around this week. Uh, whether it's because we've got a you know a bank holiday weekend here and in the states coming up, I don't know. But uh, um, things do seem to be a bit calmer. Famous last yes, words. Indeed. Okay, that wraps up the Wall Street crossover show. We will be back at one p.m. tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.